Okay. Now I have something ultra important that every Linux user really should do like as soon as possible. Um, the FBI has put out a checker application that you can run to see if your DNS has been hijacked because uh, the big, huge botnet was going around. FBI took control of the servers and starting uh, July 9th, they're going to shut down those servers. Uh, and if you are pointing to these DNS servers, then your internet's going to stop working on July 9th. Oh, wait a minute. This ain't for Linux users. This is just another example of things we don't have to worry about. Huh. <laughs> this is a Windows thing. Um, <laughs> every tech in existence, even if you've only been doing it for three months, have ran into a DNS redirect, even if you weren't really positive what it was. What, what this is is basically um, an interruption in the Windows network stack that fraudulently redoes all of your DNS lookups. Every time you, every time your computer asks for facebook.com, google.com, youtube.com, anything, you have to get a DNS lookup done, which means it has to go to a server, get the IP, come back, and then point you to the right address. Well, DNS poisoning and DNS redirection, what it means is you type in facebook.com, and it takes you to faces book, .co.uk or, or something similar when it's actually a site put there to harvest your usernames or passwords. We in the Linux world, as of April 24th, 9.24 p.m., as people in the twitch.tv slash podcast chat room would attend to, we don't have to worry about this in, in um, Ben Linux. There is no nothing like this in our vocabulary. Okay, You know, it's like the Hawaiians don't have a word for snow. You know, Linux people don't have a word for this. Is that true? There's no Hawaiian word for snow? I don't know. It's me. <laughs> it sounded really good. It sounded believable. Yeah. I was trying to think of something. Um, so I honestly, the reason I brought this up is we need to not rub this in people's faces like I just did. We need to honestly send this link to our family members who are running Windows and our friends who are running Windows to see if their computer is indeed infected with this DNS redirect. Because if it is, come July 9th, their internet, quote unquote, will stop working. They'll think the internet's completely down and they might just call you for help. So <laughs> Got it. listen, nip it before it gets too far. Good advice. Okay. Next thing, just because I made fun of Windows once, and I only have to do it once a show, <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Um, <laughs> there was a posting by Chris N Norman on Google+. Plus. I don't even know who Chris Norman is, but he's has a nice uh, image, icon, avatar of him getting doused with a silly string, it looks like. <laughs> as long as nobody's smoking a cigarette or lighting a cigarette, he's fine. Um, is that stuff they, extremely flammable? Oh, it used to be absurdly because it would happen at kids' parties. Yeah. They'd put the cake in front of the kid with the candles and other kids would start to spray the other kid. Wow. Not good. So by now, I'm sure they got sued and another company makes non-flammable versions yes. of that. Okay. That was just the sky falling. Nothing to worry about, Steve. Okay. I'm okay. not worried. He posted this image that made me almost sob for normal users, but made me laugh my butt off. Um, if you basically look at it, you'll see a disturbing trend happening. And that is Windows 8 Metro interface, which I wholeheartedly believe is going to drive Windows users away, make Windows users really mad. Mac sales will go up, Linux user base will go up because of this interface. If you look at it, and then you look at a screenshot from AOL from 1996, they look utterly scaringly alike, <laughs> which is kind of letting lending a touch of credence to something I said like a month and a half ago or so. Windows 8 is not for anyone who's ever used a computer before. <laughs> I firmly believe they're trying to get 
as much of the rest of the world who does not feel comfortable using a computer to feel comfortable using a computer. I got you. And it looks horrible. You don't like it? It, it just it's aesthetic. I think it looks pretty darn good. I I might not use it myself, but on a tablet that's pretty slick. I I will agree on a tablet I believe it will be efficient. Okay? I do believe form-wise it is good, but functional-wise I believe it's putrid. Uh-huh. I believe it it's like putting a pair of thumb cuffs on Muhammad Ali and asking him to box. I see. <laughs> Which, of course, that's not fair because he would have still knocked people out. <laughs> right. Um, I I seriously think that Metro interface is going to be so limiting to people except for the one-taskers. And the one-taskers, I mean, are people who literally just go to their computer, turn it on, go to Facebook, get infected, and then turn it off. <laughs> um, and you. there is another saving grace for those users. Okay. Right now, if you get utterly infected on Windows to where it's non bootable, Windows will merely reboot into the stupid safe mode menu saying, oh, doesn't feel like it's working. Windows 8, apparently, if you do that repetitively, go into that menu enough kind of thing, it will automatically do a type of reinstall. Um, which I think is going to make, um, let's say, techs a little upset. Really? Yeah. But will make normal users not feel as bad about getting infected. I see. You know, oh, got infected. Just turn it on and turn it off. Wow. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Not not good for anyone because then people just won't worry about getting infected. Eh, just reboot the computer. Right. Right. I say make them suffer so they remember next time. <laughs> Okay, um, this next thing, I am almost upset that I'm just now hearing about it, Steve. Okay. But it's only four episode, uh, issues in, so I don't feel as bad. Don't feel as bad. Issues in? Issues. Issues. Yeah. Okay. You know. I was going to say episodes. I think. Um, it's basically an online magazine. It's called Code Free. It's open source and free software art magazine Neat. um this is kind of in my eyes i like it because it's kind of showcasing what is possible with open source um i now work with someone who has had many hours many hours of professional training with photoshop um many semesters even i think it was total six semesters of all kinds of photoshops and graphics training I showed her this. She just looked at it. A day or two later, I said, what'd you think of that? She said, really inspiring. I really like some of the styles I saw. I said, okay, now none of that was made with Photoshop. Because <laughs> I literally just took all the pictures out and just sent her the pictures. Oh, really? And said, yeah, and I said, none of it was made with Photoshop. She said, well, what was it made with? And she's thinking, you know, paint or something like that. Right. And, and I gave her the real issue. And I said, no, it's either, either made with Inkscape or GIMP. She was like, whoa. Whoa. Her mind was blown. I'm going to give her like a week or two to absorb it and see what she says later. She'll stick with Photoshop. Oh, I'm, I there's no doubt in my mind. That's okay. I just want her to be aware she doesn't have to. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, there's so much better beer out there than Budweiser. You can keep drinking it, or you can listen to Pod Brewers and you can drink something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. neat. That's very neat. Really great art. Yeah, this is honestly the kind of art. Well, A, it's modern art is the best way I can put it. Uh, some of it is almost cartoony, sci-fi kind of thing. Some of it really looks like stills out of animated movies that look so good. Yeah, it really does. I especially like the vector drawings. They're really neat. Yeah, and uh, and and I can say on my tablet, it came across very well. Um, I can't remember what PDF application it was, but I think it was one suggested to us by a viewer. 
a watcher, a listener, a subscriber. I can't. I don't remember either. Too many of them. But seriously, if you're at all interested in graphics and you're like me and you're nothing but thumbs, you can at least see what's possible. Uh, what I honestly expect is as this grows, they're going to start introducing tutorials on ideas, not entire pictures, because that would be a book. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Well, whatever they do, I, I think it's a great thing. I didn't even know it existed. That's a great thing to just check out, especially if you're into art. And uh, how many pages is each episode? Uh, honestly, don't how remember many, off the top of my head. Or issue. 30? I want to say it was 20-something, 20, 20 yeah. It's cool. That's really cool. Was it co when? How often does it come out? Uh, it looks like it's every quarter, I believe. Ah, sweet. And, and I will say, um, Randy... I, mean, I, I want to give this guy proper credit because he's good. Noseworthy. Randy Noseworthy on Google Plus was the guy that dinged it my way. I, I seriously told him. I was mad. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? <laughs> but I thanked him because I thought this was really good stuff. Yeah. Neat. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about, Steve, I'm a little upset because this was one of the things that got bumped because me and Jeff were getting into nerddom. <laughs> And that's okay. It is. So this got skipped last week. I didn't have a chance to try it last week. I still didn't get a chance to try it this week. But I will say, one of the things um, that I hate about nearly every default tool in every operating system, including especially Windows 7, is the ability to search for files, folders, or things inside files kind of thing right you know i just want to look in my entire computer for any dot txt file containing the word baloney or something the default tools make it either require a good amount of clicks to get where you want to go or nearly impossible to be honest windows xp did almost a fair job the only thing bad thing about that was it was slow it was slow as dirt yeah so in every os i always load something else on Windows, I load a tool called Bear Grep, B A R E G R E P. That will be in the notes as well. Okay. Um, but on Linux, I still never found that one golden GUI tool for new users. Now, you can use commands like locate or find that take advantage of the index, uh, the database on a Linux file system to speed up searching and enhance searching and make searching better. But on Linux, I could never really find a nice GUI, just a simple straight up GUI to where a new user says, I can't find this file. How do I find it? Hmm. You know, I, I don't want to say, well, drop to the command line, type this, dash this, comma this, space this. Right. You know, new users don't want to hear that kind of thing. So I found recall, R E. C O L L. Ah. And I like this because the interface looks like it has a lot of the options that, to be honest, I think most people need. Uh, you can look within files, you can set up multiple per, par, parameters, parameters, and you can uh, restrict it on file types, whether it's hidden. Only certain directories. You can invert the file type selection too. So you can easily say every file but PDF. So you just select PDF, every file but, bang, done. Um, I'm going to try it. Yeah. Uh, you didn't try it yet. <laughs> I'm going to try it. <laughs> it looks awesome. Looks self explanatory. Yeah. And, I've, and to be honest, old Ubuntu, GNOME, Ubuntu before. 11.10, I believe. No, no, 10.10. 10.10 was the last non-Unity version of Ubuntu. That one had a pretty nice searchable app where you just went places, find files and folders, and then you could go to advanced, just one click from there, and you could get include and exclude statements that were pretty dynamic. Huh. Since then, I've never found the OS with a good default one built in. Maybe I'm not looking in the right place, I couldn't. So this is, I think, going to become part of my standard install. Neat. It's a good tool, and it's amazing how...